with a giant claw powerful enough to punch through metal. A mouth full of crocodile-like teeth. And a sail on its back. It's the biggest, baddest, weirdest dinosaur you've never heard of. Its name is Spinosaurus. Now we unravel its deadly secrets as we resurrect a monster. Africa, 95 million years ago. Another day in the dino killing fields. Parala Titans are gigantic, lumbering plant eaters. Their size keeps the adults safe. But their babies are a softer target. Rugops, a 30-foot long killing machine, is on the hunt. Rugop's speed wins the day. But it's not over. In this land of giant killers, there was always a bigger beast. Enter Spinosaurus. Although Tyrannosaurus rex and Allosaurus are considered dinosaur superstars, Spinosaurus deserves celebrity status too. Spinosaurus is a truly amazing dinosaur. It's big, it's really specialized, really well adapted to a different way of life than any other giant creature, and it's just plain weird looking. It certainly is one of the great stars in the history of dinosaurs. Spinosaurus has earned its Hollywood star. It's big and bizarre with a seriously bad attitude. If I heard that there was a living Spinosaurus today, I would be there in a flash. I would love to see what this creature actually was like, moving around, looking for food, just even standing there to see such a creature, a creature unlike anything around today, would just be phenomenal. Resurrected, it would be a walking nightmare. And its horror credentials really go off the chart when you realize that it is also a 60-foot-long hyper carnivore. It was a giant. It was the biggest of the meat-eating dinosaurs we know about. It had a long skull with big crocodile-like teeth. It had massive arms with huge claws. And it had these really weird elongate spines coming out of its back to form a sail or a fin, things that make it distinctive compared to all the other giant dinosaurs. How could this amazing creature be such an unknown quantity? The answer is simple. The fossil evidence that could confirm its star status was obliterated. There is no complete skeleton, just a few fragments of fossils. In order to resurrect Spinosaurus, we must go beyond the fossil record and build him from the inside out. We will use high-tech imaging to look inside the few fossilized bones that do exist and we will use robotic monsters to try to understand how it hunted and killed. Look at those teeth. How are they shaped? How would those teeth pierce through flesh? Look at those jaws. How do those arms operate? How deeply could those claws penetrate? What we do know about Spinosaurus is that it was weird and it was big. The story of Spinosaurus begins here, 
in the Sahara Desert in Egypt. Between 1909 and 1914, German paleontologist Ernst Strummer unearthed the first and only fossil bones of Spinosaurus. Strummer brought the fossils back to the Bavarian Museum of Natural History in Munich, and the world got its first indication of just what this unusual animal looked like. This is a photograph of the actual type specimen of Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, which was mounted on the wall in the museum in Munich. This is what puts the spine in Spinosaurus. You can see the dorsal vertebra here with these amazing dorsal spines sticking up. This one here is 1.65 meters, so five and a half, almost six feet. This is this long crocodilian-like jaw here. Really an amazing skeleton, and this is the one and only Spinosaurus skeleton that has ever existed. But the skeleton didn't last long. Human history collided with prehistory. During World War II, Allied bombers conducted long-range bombing missions over key installations across Germany. Sadly, the Bavarian Museum was across the street from the Nazi Party headquarters. And on April 27th, in 1944, the Allied forces bombed Munich and collateral damage destroyed the museum. The Spinosaurus skeleton was smashed to dust. What had survived for 95 million years was vaporized in the fog of war. Since there are only a few bits and pieces known from the original Spinosaurus, it's pretty difficult to put it together. What we need is a link. What we need is something to tie those pieces together. The few photographs of this amazing discovery have inspired our team. They provide a foundation that allows us to resurrect a monster. But these photos raise questions about how this predator hunted and killed. Why were its jaw and teeth so different from those of other carnivores? Unlike a typical meat-eating dinosaur, it's got this long, very crocodile-like snout and cone-shaped teeth rather than the railroad spike-like teeth of T-Rex. Why did it have such huge forearms, tipped with gigantic claws? The claws and hands of Spinosaurus, honest to goodness, are like industrial meat hooks. If you were to go to a slaughterhouse or a butcher's shop, that's where you would see their modern equivalent. And what about that bizarre spine that gives Spinosaurus its name? All those long spines together form this big sail or fin on the back. It's a narrow structure. What's it for? In order to find out, we must travel back 95 million years. The Earth that Spinosaurus inhabited would be unrecognizable to us. What is today the Sahara Desert was a vast network of tidal and mangrove swamps. The hot climate allowed for a multitude of plants and animals to flourish. There was plenty of prey for Spino, but also plenty of competition. Spinosaurus certainly was a big apex predator, but it wasn't alone. When we go and look at the environment that Spinosaurus lived, we see a couple of really large predatory dinosaurs. We even have indications there might even be more. Spinosaurus lived in an environment with extremely large plant-eating dinosaurs that may have been a major food source. But it was competing for this food source against some pretty tough customers. One of Spino's main rivals was a giant predator with a mouthful of a name, Carcharodontosaurus, and it had a mouthful of fearsome shark-like teeth. It's essentially a giant land shark, a terribly fierce creature. It has a, a, a huge jaw. And lurking just offshore 
giant crocodiles as big as a bus stalk the warm, brackish waters. This thing could have preyed upon just about anything it wanted to, uh, probably including dinosaurs. But one alpha predator ruled them all, Spinosaurus. What gave him his killing edge? resurrected a monster, but 95 million years separates us from this huge killer. Spinosaurus was the world's biggest meat-eating dinosaur, yet it has become a postscript in dinosaur history. The most complete fossil of Spinosaurus was obliterated by bombs in World War II. And without the fossils to ensure its immortality, Spinosaurus has turned into the most amazing dinosaur you have never heard of. But scientists have continued to try to uncover more about this massive creature and its weaponry. Paleontologists have to rely on a number of different lines of evidence to try to reconstruct any fossil creature. We can look at its closest living relatives, things like birds and crocodiles, and see what traits they have. And it's by these ideas and by some speculation that we can resurrect an extinct animal. Spino, however, was unlike any dinosaur ever found. It seemed doomed to remain a mystery. Amazingly, the missing link to this remarkable creature was found not in Africa, but more than 2,000 miles away in the English countryside. In 1983, near the town of Dorking, an amateur fossil hunter named William Walker discovered a huge claw from a predatory dinosaur, which was dubbed Baryonyx. Baryonyx appeared to be a very singular dinosaur with a very long snout packed with dozens of teeth. Very peculiar anatomy overall with very robust forelimbs that carried a very large, powerful claw on the thumb. That giant thumb claw is a distinctive weapon, and it had been seen in another dinosaur. Some astute paleontologists recognize some intriguing similarities between this new English dinosaur and Spinosaurus. Paleontologists determined that Baryonyx was a close relative of Spinosaurus. We can use information that we find about Baryonyx, which are known almost completely, to allow us to sort of fill in the blanks about what we don't know about Spinosaurus. Baryonyx is like a mini Spinosaurus, without the sail. Using its skeleton as a template, scientists were able to reconstruct Spino. And when it was done, it proved to be an absolute monster. 60 feet in length, 7 foot forearms, 15 inch claws, and 9 tons. Spino was nearly as long as this 18-wheeler and 6,000 pounds heavier. And it outweighed and outreached the legendary T-Rex and every other big predatory dinosaur. Size matters, but the weaponry matters even more. And rebuilding Spino's toolkit is the key to understanding what and how it killed. When paleontologists want to know how prehistoric predators do their dirty work, the teeth tell the tale. 
scientists study teeth the same way a detective looks at a murder weapon. Length, shape, number, the way they point in the jaw, all give clues to how an animal kills. But for years, Spino's trail was cold. With no fossil teeth to examine, there was no chance of figuring out the kill plan. Then science got a lucky break. In 1975, Spinosaurus fossil fragments were discovered in the Kem Kem Desert in Morocco. And these fossils had teeth, the clues scientists needed. At the Museum of Natural History in Milan, Italy, a team of paleontologists led by Cristiano Dal Sasso examined these teeth. They discovered that their conical shape and spacing made them perfect for grabbing, puncturing, and gripping. Not the smash, tear, and slice approach that characterized the business end of a T-Rex. When we look at the skull of T-Rex, we see a skull that is really built for power and for delivering a tough fight. With Spinosaurus, what we see is, in fact, a much different arrangement. This skull is not arranged to really direct forces back into the skull, but rather the teeth are arranged much more for grabbing and holding. T-Rex used its massive skull as a weapon to smash and rip through heavily armored prey. Spinosaurus was the largest carnivorous dinosaur ever to stalk the Earth. But most people have never heard of it. Now, our scientific team is resurrecting this monster to try to figure out how it lived, hunted, and killed. Resurrecting a dinosaur like Spinosaurus is pretty difficult, especially when the first specimen was destroyed and we can't even use those original bones. Recently discovered skull fragments reveal that Spino didn't bite like other big dinosaurs. Its teeth weren't designed to tear through armored skin, bone, and flesh like T-Rex. They're cone-shaped teeth, six, eight, ten inches long, possibly longer, sticking out of tremendously powerful jaws, really, really nasty weapons of destruction. How did it shred its prey? The answer isn't in a museum. It's here, out in the croc lab. Biologist Ken Vallit says there are many similarities between Spinosaurus and modern crocs. If you look at this skull as analogous to a Spinosaurus skull, we have a fairly low skull that's elongated with a slender snout and lined with these conical teeth. Crocodilians have the most powerful bite forces of any animals that have been measured. They have a tremendous crushing power in their jaws, but they don't have teeth that are meant to tear and separate prey items into, into bite-sized pieces. So if your teeth don't cut it, how do you kill? They can grab a hold of a prey item and go into the death roll. And just by the mass of their body, they can tear an item off of a prey animal. Tearing an animal to bits in a death roll is brutal, yet effective. Spino was way too big to spin. But crocs have another terrible trick. Crocodiles will often take a large prey animal, grab some portion of it, for instance, a forelimb, lift it up out of the water and sling it one way and then forcibly throw it the other way. And the mass of the prey animal tears the limb away. They swallow that, they go find the body and, and do that again. Crocodiles literally shake their prey to bits. And it looks like Spinosaurus used a similar technique. When Spinosaurus got its jaws onto its victim, it would pierce through the meat with those, those conical teeth. 
it would thrash its skull back and forth, yanking out chunks of meat, and as it's thrashing back and forth, that victim's neck could be broken. So between the meat being pulled out and the thrashing back and forth, that victim would not last very long. Three times as long as the biggest living crocodile and six times as heavy, this dinosaur had monstrous power. And Spinosaurus had another advantage over crocs. For such a titan, it was faster than any of its typical prey. It needed to be. Spinosaurs lived in a hyper-competitive hunting ground, where even lumbering prey like Paralititans were surprisingly well-armed. They could use their tails like giant clubs. A lash from the tail of one of these giants was like getting smashed with a telephone pole. So how does a nine-ton, 60-foot monster with a sail on its back manage to be both quick and maneuverable? The answer is in its feet. This is a, an adaptation for speed and for forward locomotion. So if you look at the, at the leg and the foot of a meat-eating dinosaur, it's all about moving forward. To keep nine tons of speeding spino on track, the monster's hips and leg bones were engineered to withstand huge stress and torsion. They have this really strong bone box, essentially, that forms this big muscle attachment point. It's like the girders on a bridge. So then they can have these big leg muscles that come up and attach to this bone box, and then it creates a very efficient system. Flexible feet, immense legs, and reinforced hips. Spino was a phenomenal running machine. If Spinosaurus was coming for you, you'd better learn how to hide. If you ran in a straight line and it was chasing you, it would get you, unless you were an Olympian athlete, and then you've got a chance to book away from it faster than it could run. Unfortunately, we're at the right height for it to grasp, to snap out with those jaws. All dinosaurs were swift movers compared to a lot of modern creatures. It could catch any one of us. A picture is emerging of a fast and furious killer, quick enough to hunt down prey, strong enough to shake it to bits. But this monster has more terrible secrets that must be explained. Each of its arms, bigger than a grown man, was tipped with three massive meat hooks. How did Spino use them? And just how much damage could they inflict? As we scientifically resurrect this creature, we have re-examined its six-foot jaw. But it had another formidable weapon huge, razor-sharp claws on muscular arms. Most carnivorous dinosaurs had pathetically small forelimbs. By comparison, Spino looks like a bodybuilder with giant claws. Today's big land predators are things like polar bears and grizzly bears and Siberian tigers. And all of them have some pretty impressive claws, claws that can make short work of a human being like us. But those claws are pathetic against the gigantic talons of Spinosaurus. Do these claws hold the key to understanding this creature's place at the top of the food chain? In a lab near Los Angeles, scientists and special effects experts have joined forces to perform a unique and innovative experiment. Paleontologist Dr. Matt Lamana and the special effects team, led by designer Kim Hicks, are attempting to bring Spinosaurus back to life. 
This is a reconstruction of the arm of Spinosaurus based on the largest known Spinosaur individual. They are building a life-sized steel replica of a Spinosaurus forearm and claw. Seven feet of deadly power. What we're gonna do here today is slam this big schematic Spinosaurus hand into some modern day items and see what kind of damage it does. Maybe to get an idea of what the real thing might have done to animals that lived in its environment. Scaling up from Spino's cousin, Baryonyx, Lamana has provided precise specs to the effects team to recreate the arm and claw. The proportions of the arm look really good. Because you guys have followed the references that I gave you really well. We boosted it up to seven feet per your concepts of what this actual scale was also. A powerful air cannon will provide the muscle to propel the steel claw. The entire device is anchored to the concrete floor using 17 half-inch bolts. If this thing gets loose, it could kill someone. Well, we have yeah, a seven foot radius, time. so the tip is going to move a lot faster than the actual thrust of the, uh, the armature, and we've got about a 12 inch thrust on the armature. Approximating the force of the real animal is tricky, but if Lamana's calculations are right, the size is dead on. The other real danger is the unexpected return of the hand. When you're not looking, it's kind of like a boom on a sailboat. If you're looking the wrong way and it comes back across the ship, it'll knock you out. Yeah. The first victims, two large pieces of ballistic gel. The dense gel simulates the skin and muscle layer of a dinosaur. Look at the size of the wounds that our Spinosaurus hand is making in this simulated carcass. This penetrated really deeply just with me pushing it. Finally, it's time to rumble. Yuck. <laughs> That's what happens. Look at the slime trail. I have to admit, I was expecting a splatter. But I think what we got is even more impressive in the sense that the depth of this wound, the, le the like long, jagged wound that this yields. Imagine you know, the body of a big animal, something that gets hit with that. And that's, that's a devastating wound. Now our recreation team ups the ante. They want to see the upper limits on Spinosaurus's smackdown power. The claws easily rip into flesh, but could they have slashed through the armored skin of prehistoric prey? It's time to really test Spino's power against steel. Bring in the car door. Our mechanical claw hits the door with 4,500 pounds of force. Talk about monster garage. Now, obviously, this is an animal that's going to keep attacking with these big giant arms and the, and the tip with these huge claws. I mean, we've seen today like what a you know what a model of this thing's foreland could have done. It's just uh, really humbling to imagine what the real thing might have been like. And imagine what it would do to a human being. No animal would want to be on the receiving end of that mighty hook. But there's still one big mystery to explain. What did that spine that gave this saurus its name actually do? It may have looked like something from a Japanese monster movie, 
but Spinosaurus was no fictional creation. This real-life Godzilla once ruled the Earth. Unfortunately, we know very little about this awesome animal. It's the ultimate cold case. The loss of the original Spinosaurus fossil was a great tragedy for science. And so, for many decades, we've missed what it is that makes Spinosaurus so interesting because we couldn't look at its bones. Piecing together the few fossil fragments that do exist, we've been able to build up a picture of Spinosaurus and bring this monster back to life. But there is something missing from our resurrection of Spinosaurus. And that is the purpose for that spiny sail. Often paleontologists can find direct comparisons between the features of living animals and prehistoric creatures, but not here. Since nothing in the world today has a sail like Spinosaurus, paleontologists are forced to speculate on the possible functions of the structure. What was the purpose of Spino's sail? The answer could lie in the brutal climate. This is a time when the world was very, very hot, hotter than it is today. And so if a creature is vigorous, if a creature is moving around a lot, it's going to have a cooling issue. A prehistoric predator like Spinosaurus was constantly on the move. Nature has provided a way for some animals to cool off. For instance, elephants flap their ears to help shed heat. Spino's sail may have had a similar role in that superheated climate. A structure like a sail gives a huge surface area without much addition of volume, it can remove heat. Hot blood flowing through the skin covering the vertebrae releases heat before it returns to the body. Another theory is that instead of being a device to keep cool, the sail was a way for males to look cool. It's quite common in animals for males to sport extravagant horns or elaborate plumage to attract females. Spino's sail could have been the equivalent of a peacock's tail. It could show off against maybe other Spinosaurs, maybe in tests of showing off which is the better Spinosaurus, which is the dominant one, which one, which one gets all the girls or whatever it is. But with only one skeleton ever discovered, it's impossible to know if the sale was found only on male Spinos. But now, there's a radical new theory about the purpose of the sale from Italian scientists studying the only existing fossilized vertebrae, fishing. That's right. Many paleontologists believe Spinosaurus was not only the world's biggest fisherman, it used the biggest lure. Some fish-eating birds, like herons, use their wings to create shadows while standing in the water. Fish are attracted to these dark areas. And when they swim near, the birds grab them with their beaks. Did Spino use its fin the same way and then use its teeth and claws to nail the kill? In an attempt to answer this question, Cristiano Dal Sasso and his colleagues examined the Spino jaw fossil. They discovered an intriguing feature. The snout is covered with a number of enlarged pits. These pits have been found only in the Spino family. So what purpose did they serve? Once again, the answer may lie with the modern crocodile. It's been discovered in recent years that modern crocodilians, like alligators, have specialized pits in their snout. Those pits hold receptors that allow them to detect motion in the water. Now, there are also lots of pits in the snout of Spinosaurus. And it may be that in Spinosaurus, we have the same type of sensory features. But how can we tell if Spino had these sense organs? How do you look inside a 95 million year old skull? The Italian scientists decide to use a CT scan 
to disclose the hidden structure of Spino's head. The CAT scan reveals that the pits at the end of the snout all have a kind of canal attached to them. Dalsasso and his colleagues believe that these canals may have been nerve pathways to the pits. We don't know this for certain, and it will take some detailed anatomical work to demonstrate those pits are the same thing as the pits in crocodilians. With what could be motion detecting pits at the end of its nose, and a skull and teeth that look like a crocodile's. The scientific team is starting to think Spinosaurus might also have behaved like one, too. In fact, maybe this long, low skull was crocodile-like for the same reasons that crocodile skulls are crocodile-like. That's really handy as a means of actually catching and eating fish. The giant claws that Spinosaurus could use to disembowel its victims would serve just as well as a pair of monstrous hooks. Remarkably, the largest ever land predator was also a formidable water predator. Spinosaurus was adaptable and apparently invincible, a gigantic multi-purpose killing machine from which nothing on land or in water was safe. Another day, another battle for supremacy. And Spinosaurus was top alpha dog. It was the biggest land predator the world has ever seen. So big, even a rival giant predator like Carcharodontosaurus would have been no match for its power. Spinosaurus, given its huge size, probably could have muscled away uh, a Carcharodontosaurus from, from its kill. We've seen that Spinosaurus was the perfect killer with jaws, claws, teeth, and speed that easily dominated the Cretaceous landscape. But about 95 million years ago, within the blink of an eye in geological time, this monster disappears. Why? Spinosaurus was the last of its kind. It was really good at what it did, but the problem is the world changed around it, and Spinosaurus and its lineage didn't adapt. A chain of earth-shaking events caused temperatures to plummet. The sea receded. Spino's lush habitat changed for the worse. Sea level dropped and the habitat of Spinosaurus was degraded. Essentially, the niche of an organism is an economy, and that economy can run just great for a million years, and then something can get out of balance, and there goes that organism. First to die off are the big plant eaters, like Paralatitan. And this makes finding food difficult for Spino. And when you're this big, you need to eat all the time. Spinosaurus's own massive size is becoming more of a problem than an asset. It was only equipped to kill increasingly scarce big prey. Smaller predators, like Rugops, could handle the change. Spinosaurus was forced to scavenge, and its size was no help against a pack of small, agile predators. The once invincible Spinosaurus that ruled a world of giants is fighting for its life. And Spinosaurus had one major design flaw. Those spines are fused to the vertebra. So Spinosaurus, if it rolls over, it breaks its back and dies. Spino's amazing sail, whether cooling device, sexual ornament, 
or fishing apparatus was a symbol of a creature that was too big and too specialized to live in a rapidly shifting environment. 95 million years ago, the world changed, but Spinosaurus could not change with it. The adaptations of Spinosaurus, including its gigantic size, made it really successful when times were good. But when times changed and the environment changed around it, what had been an advantage turned into a liability. And its size and its specializations were just the wrong thing for that environment. It was too big to survive anymore. We have resurrected a monster, reconstructed the life of a beast that looks like it stepped out of a horror movie, and rebuilt the biggest carnivorous dinosaur ever. A 95 million year old predator has been brought back to life. And now, Spinosaurus rightly claims its place on the dinosaur A-list. But what other monsters lie beneath our world? Monsters waiting for resurrection.